Mike, here you are in the setup. Uh, I don't see anything uh, obvious here that's causing you to shank the ball and hit on the hosel. Here you are in the three position. This is when the left arm is parallel to the ground. Again, you've done a very good job of maintaining your weight on your left side and uh, keeping your low point of your swing arc in front of the golf ball. You have begun to hinge your wrist. Um, you've got um, not as much wrist hinge as a lot of other players, but you have you're starting to get some wrist hinge there. And I don't see again. I don't see this as a major issue for you shanking the ball. Here you are at the top of the backswing. It's a little bit further back. I like the fact that it is compact. You don't need any bigger backswing, particularly with the pitching wedge here. And you've kept your weight on your left side. Now we're going to look at your swing on the downswing, and this is where some of the fundamentals start to unravel just a little bit. I want you to pay particularly attention to where your head is in relationship to that red line. You have a tendency to reverse weight shift and fall back towards your back foot. On the way down. And as you hit the ball at this point, your uh, legs just lock up straight. There is no shift to the left. Um, and uh, that's and you can start to see your left arm buckle a little bit early there. So ideally, I would like uh, you to move that right hip. And we did some work on that where you would try to turn your right hip into the golf ball and uh, let the right side of your body turn more and that will help. Now I want to look at your down the line swing. Now we're going to look at you and Grant Waite um, in the down the line view. Grant's hands are, are actually a little closer to his legs than yours are, so one would assume that it's certainly possible to hit the ball uh, in between the gate, even if you set up a little bit closer than you are now. So uh, let's take a look at some of the movements. Going back, I want to take Grant to the three position, left arm parallel to the ground. I'm going to take you to the three position, left arm parallel to the ground. That'd be right about. There. Now Grant has extended his back leg, straightened it a little bit because he has a little bit more hip turn than you do. Your knees are still pretty much level here, so you don't have a lot of lower body turning going on. We worked on that toward the end of the session, and there were elements of that that you you said that you kind of like the feeling of that and that's something that uh, we would need to work on if you wanted to continue to work on developing your swing but in terms of preparation for this Saturday we're looking for some sort of a quick fix for the hosel hit the shank but at this stage the main difference in your backswing and, and Grant's is that he has a little bit more hip turn he's straightening his right leg and he's flexing his left leg now let's uh, go back further into the back swing. Take Grant up to the top of the swing. And then let's take uh, you up to the top. Now Grant and you are both at the top of the swing. Um, you can see how Grant's hands are a little bit higher um, than yours. This arm is pointing right at that hip. If you drew a line from the wrist to the elbow, that line would extend right to and point to his hip. Uh, you're, you've got that flared up a little bit. Um, and so that's because you didn't really turn as much as, as he did. And that because you didn't turn, you had to lift the club up as opposed to getting the club back in position by turning as opposed to lifting the arm. Um, this is also why your left arm bends a little bit in your backswing because you do not turn your lower body. Um, so that's uh, some of the differences that we're seeing and it's obvious uh, when you look at the lower body how there's a tremendous difference here. Grant has um, a fairly straight back leg and then a 
very flexed left leg. You have maintained flex in both knees, and you're not really extending that right leg. And that's uh, and by extending the right leg and straightening it, you will create a, t a hip turn. That's what causes hip turns. You want your your right leg to extend while your left leg flexes. You're maintaining your weight on your left side, I like that, but I also want to incorporate more lower body. Now as Grant comes down into the ball, we're returning to the five position, which is when the left arm is parallel on the down swing. Going to return you to the five position. You can see how Grant's shaft is between, is kind of right in the center of his bicep. It's between his shoulder and his elbow. And yours is more right on top of the shoulder. Uh, so he's he's got he's coming in with a little bit flatter swing. You're a little bit more upright. Now he probably has a four or five, probably a five or a six iron in his hand. So it's it is going to be a different plane than yours. But even with the wedge, you would have that shaft about the center of his bicep. He has started to turn his hip into the golf ball. Now as Grant continues. You can see how when he gets to impact, you can see how much he has turned his hips. I can easily see the, the left back pocket. So he's, uh, and then as you come through, you still are pretty much sideways here. Uh, you have not really turned into the ball. And by what Grant has done, you can see how close his right elbow is here to his right pocket, his right hip. So he's getting that connection. That right arm is hugging his side. Um, and yours is pulled away from, uh, from your side. And so working on those drills with the what I call the, the T drill, you could actually put a golf tee under your armpit and hold it there. So that it would be easy, it's easy to see that Grant could hold a head cover under his armpit and strike this ball. And not that head cover would not drop out. He's That armpit is closed down on his chest. And this is um, one of the key things that we need to work on uh, is lower body turn and connecting that right arm. Because that's what stabilizes and creates a constant path for the swing arc is that uh, you need to make sure that you keep your club connected to the core of your swing, the body, and that the club is not swinging just through the shoulder joints which are which can float around in all kinds of directions. But when you connect those arms to your chest it, re it shrinks and reduces the number of possible pathways back to the golf ball. When you disconnect those arms, that, that uh, allows for a whole bunch of other paths to be possible. And uh, if you don't come down on the right path, the right path is, is there, but you, also these other wrong paths are there. And so uh, you have to really be practicing a lot to choose the right path when you have so many paths possible. When you swing the correctly, there's not very many wrong paths possible when your arms are connected. There's...